Okay, so after we've done, we have gone through basically the, the experimental part of the experiment. Now we can actually do some calculation. Okay, so I guess I want to get rid of these papers. Okay, so now basically the calculation part is um, and then basically the circuit that we had was this circuit here so we had this circuit here basically we had a, a capacitor here i'm sorry a resistor here a resistor here and a capacitor and um, and we monitor the input I'm, I'm sorry, the output voltage at different frequencies, and this is the table that I put together while I was changing the frequency and measuring the, the output voltage. Um, so we can safely assume that uh, basically, uh, I mean, uh, with the changes in frequency, 40 hertz to, to all the way up to 120 kilohertz, the offset DC voltage is actually not changing. You know, it, it goes all the way to, I mean, 5 to 5.2 volts. So it's not that much of a change compared to, uh, I don't know, if you take, for example, 120, the change in, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the in the in the frequency was about 120 kilohertz from 40 from 40 hertz all the way up to 120 kilohertz so it's about 120 120,000 hertz and the change in voltage was about only 0.2 volts or so so it's it, it's not it's not really that important I mean it's not it's not really important at all so but the volt, but the change in voltage is basically uh, uh, is the is basically important. And also, one more thing which is important is that your 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 uh, basically the, the voltage that we ha that V of in that we had here, your V of in was basically ten volts peak to peak, and the DC offset on that offset was was basically 10 volts 10 volts DC so the DC on, uh, offset on that was positive 10 volts DC and you see that the that the peak to peak voltage of course changes here from from 5 volts over here from 5 volts peak to peak and goes down all the way up to 1.5 1.5 and one thing that I did not actually do here was, uh, was actually the, 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 I mean the, the voltage normally if it was a, if it, if it was a low pass filter, it, it's supposed to, at, at very low frequencies, it's supposed to start at some voltage very close to the very close to the supply voltage which is now this is five volts peak to peak which is half of the supply voltage and then as i go above as i go all the way up to 120 kilohertz it goes all the way down to 1.4 volts peak to peak but i don't know what happens to this to basically to uh the other five volts so now let me test this quickly and then I'll come back or or I can actually do it over here on camera as well so I hook up my signal generator here again to the circuits I hook up my signal generator here to the circuit and go over here so this is my signal generator Okay. So let's say that connect 
this to channel one and channel one I connected to the input I connect this to the input and I'm uh, supposed to have some sort of input here. Okay. Oh, I'm at the end of the end of the Okay, so let's go to DC. And I don't care about the I don't care about the offset, so I just I keep reading on. Okay, let me show you what I'm doing. I don't care about the offset, so I I just keep reading on AC, and this is my this is my input over here. So I I read. DC voltage, I'm sorry, the AC voltage, and this is channel 2, so I connect channel 2 to the output, which is basically right over here, so this is my output, I connect it over here, and then I go to dual and read AC, is right over here so read AC and you see over here the the voltage is at and 0.5 volts basically vertical volts per division and it's a very and right now I'm about the output is about 0.5 volts or, or 500 millivolts now I have to decrease my frequency way down and I go to about I have to go below 40 Hertz for 50 milliseconds I cannot actually read anything here This is my channel one. So this is my input. But it doesn't make any sense. So let me make a reading here and then I'll be I'll be back with the result. Okay, so what happens here is actually interesting. You see over here now the frequency is three something about something about four five fourteen is jumping around, right? So it's about now it's about ten It's about 10 Hertz so at about 10 Hertz I have 10 volts peak to peak on my input signal and 5 volts peak to peak on my on my output signal but uh, and, and if I if I if I go down to for example 5 Hertz or something like that 4 to 5 Hertz and if I go 3 Hertz over here I'm not even, I, I don't even know if these values are trustable or not, but I take it as, 
I, I, I can trust it for now. So if I go to 2, 3 hertz over here, you see that the that the voltage is not actually could cannot actually rise to any value meaning that it moves around one two three so point six times five is something about point six times five is about three volts or so so at this frequency, I cannot have even my full voltage of the power supply, which is 10 volts peak to peak. So if I go about, if I go to about something about 10 hertz, I have the full supply of my, of my, of my 10 volts peak to peak here. And I have now connected this, this RMS multimeter to the input and it's giving me 2.6 volts. Now 2.6 volts, 2.6 volts, 2.6 volts times 2 square root of 2 is equal to 26 square root of 2 by 5, which is equal to 7.35 volts. So that means that, well, on the oscilloscope, I'm getting 10 volts peak to peak. On this oscilloscope, I'm getting 10 volts peak to peak. And if I if I hook up this oscilloscope, for example, this 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 test lead or this probe to the other oscilloscope, I should get the same value. Meaning that here I'm at two volts, so let me move to five volts, and now I'm getting about two vertical, basically two two vertical units here. Two times so is equal to ten volts peak to peak. So that means that the 10 volts peak to peak, I have it at about 10 hertz. I have it at about 10 hertz, but then this multimeter is at, at, at this very low frequency, 11 hertz is, is giving me 7.5 volts. That means that this multimeter at this frequency, the RMS part, the AC RMS part of it cannot actually be trusted. So the, the value that is giving me is actually wrong based on the value that I that I'm getting from these two oscilloscopes. So and for whatever reason and then when, when I get to eleven hertz I have my full supply voltage which is ten volts peak to peak, but for whatever reason I'm getting only five volts on my output, which is actually not very uh, not very normal based on what we had uh, in the previous low pass circuits that we had before so that's basically how this circuit actually um, behaves okay it doesn't matter really I mean most of the time it doesn't matter really why something happens because I mean most of the time you don't you can't actually there is no way to know why things are happening that the way that they're happening but at least you need to know what's happening Okay, and then that becomes some sort of, and that that you can, you can actually think about it as experience, and uh, then you can actually uh, work with with that kind of thing, work with your experience. Not, I mean, um, of course you need to know the the formulas and and how to calculate things and so on and so forth. But uh, it's not really necessary to know why everything is happening, but of course you need to know what's happening. So um, so that's basically how the circuit works. And, um, and now if you want to, uh, if you want to calculate the, do the, 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 the necessary calculations related to this circuit, what you can do so first you have this circuit over here and then there are a couple of things that you can calculate here so first of all you need to calculate your x of c in this circuit so i'm going to put this over here so you know that your x of x of c x of c is actually equal to 1 over 2 pi fc so uh at uh, 
Now let's let's take this as at some frequency. For example, you will take it as at 90 hertz, 90 kilohertz, or I don't know, 30 kilohertz or so. We'll take it as 30 kilohertz because we ha will have to set to we'll have to basically calculate these at some frequency. I'm going to take the frequency at I'm going to take the frequency at 30 kilohertz. I have some data for that for that frequency. And uh, so we have in at this frequency we have in was 10 volts peak to peak. And uh, you know the value of your C was 0 0.01 microfarad. And you had those two basically those two uh, we had R1 which was basically 1 kilo ohm and we had R2 which was which was again 1 kilo ohm okay so once this happens so now you can actually at this frequency for example you can calculate your the, the reactance of your of, of your capacitor so so x of c is equal to 1 over 2 pi fc the frequency was 30 kilohertz so times 30 times 10 raised to the power 3 kilohertz and 3 into into 10 raised to the power 3 hertz times uh, the c which is basically 0 0.01 uh, microfarad so times 10 raised to the power negative 6 farad so then you can simplify this by um, 10 raised to the power negative 6 or 10 raised to the power negative 3 and these two will cancel out and then you will have uh, uh, so you can this is 10 raised to the power negative 2 10 raised to the power negative 2 and so you have basically 1 over 2 pi into 30 into 10 raised to the power negative 5 So let's see what, what, what this thing is. So 1 over 2 pi, not random, but 1 over 2 pi times 30 into 10 raised to the power negative 5 is equal to 530.50. Oh, 530.50. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me see if I my calculation was right here. So I have one over two pi times um, f, which is thirty kilohertz. So thirty into ten raised to the power three hertz into c, which is zero point zero one microfarad into ten raised to the power negative six farad. Is equal to 530.5 ohm. So your x of c is equal to. So at at, at this frequency, at f is equal to 30 kilohertz. At v of n is equal to 10 volts peak to peak. And c is equal to 0 0.01 microfarad. And at uh, with R1 is equal to um, with R1 is equal to uh, R1 is equal to one kilo ohm, and with R2 is equal to one kilo ohm. Uh, then at these values, basically, then your X of C is equal to 530.5. 30.5 ohm okay so that's basically the first thing that you can calculate here now um, now the circuit that I had here the circuit that I had here was basically this thing and um, when DC comes in basically when DC comes in then you can imagine that this that this uh, basically that this uh, 
uh, capacitor is not there so you have basically only these two resistors so you have a one kilo ohm resistor over here one kilo ohm resistor over here and it becomes a simple voltage divider circuit and the output of this voltage divider circuit is going to be half of your uh, supply voltage because because uh, these two have the exact same values, one kilo ohm, one kilo ohm. So, so your output is going to be five volts, and and that's basically shown here because all of these DC offsets that you that you got here were actually five volts. And if you want to have a formula for here, you have you basically know that if you have a DC circuit over here coming to a power supply for example something like this if you have r1 and r2 you know that the r of equivalent of this circuit is r1 plus r2 and the voltage drop across this resistor and basically if this is v of s and you have these voltage drops across these two resistors so this is V of R1 and V of R2. In this circuit, V of S is equal to V of R1 plus V of R2. And, um, and then what happens here is that um, the voltage drop across this resistor is actually uh, V of R1, for example, is equal to R1 to r of equivalent times v of in and uh, there is there is a whole bunch of uh, i mean there we, we there is we we, we we should i mean we would have to discuss a couple of things in order to get this to, to get to this formula but that's actually the, the formula that you use in order to calculate v of r1 over here and v of r2 is actually equal to R2 over R of equivalent times V of in. Okay, now uh, R of equivalent over here is R1 plus R2. So, for example, V of R1 would be equal to R1 over R1 plus R2, R1 plus R2 times V of in. Okay. And if you do this, if you use this this formula here, what you would get is that, for example, uh, the the voltage that that you get over here, if you take it as V of R two across this this resistor, is R two, basically V of R two over here, is going to be equal to R two over the the equivalent resistance in this circuit, which is R one plus R two. R1 plus R2 times V of in and V of in is actually the DC voltage coming in this circuit which was 10 volts so then V of R2 not the peak to peak voltage the peak to peak voltage is related to the AC circuit and we are here just assuming that the that the DC part is coming in we are not concerned about the, the AC part although both the DC and AC are coming in at the same time and doing their thing and getting out but but we have to actually we, we have to think about them individually so so we have R2 would be equal to for example 1000 ohm and then R1 plus R2 would be 1000 plus 1000 times 10 volts so this is actually 1000 divided by 2000 times 10 and that would be basically 1 by 2 times 10 which is equal to 5 volts DC okay so 5 volts DC is actually the voltage that you would get here and that's basically what we actually got um, on all of these DC offsets that we had here so that's that's basically that now um, now for the for the AC part if, if basically AC comes in <coughs> basically you can imagine that for whatever reason 
you can imagine that this resistor is not there and then I and I forgot to to test this but for now we can just simply um, we can just simply assume that that's the case I will actually uh, I don't I don't know but but probably I, I, I might actually test this sometime later uh, but we can assume that this that this resistor is not there and so you have a simple low pass filter okay you have a simple low pass filter with a 1k ohm resistor and a 0 0.01 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor and the ac v of out the v of out of ac from this circuit would be a, a simple low pass filter and uh, let's actually calculate this one and see if that's actually the case because I'm kind of not sure if that will actually work out in calculation because the circuit was behaving a little bit weird uh, when I at least for very for, for low frequencies but I think for this frequency for the frequency that we are actually talking about that for 30 kilohertz we are not going to have much problem most probably not so in this circuit you know that if you have this circuit over here the the voltage across this capacitor which is your v of out is going to be is going to be v of out is going to be the 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 reactance of this capacitor which is actually the the equivalent of a of the of of, of some resistor over here the reactance of this capacitor which is x of c at uh, at that frequency that we are talking about which is right now 30 kilohertz divided by the total resistance in this circuit which is in this in this case is going to be the 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 impedance which is actually the z times v of in so it's basically the same thing except that here we have a value of a resistor here we have some uh, reactance which is actually the same thing and here we have R of equivalent here we have impedance which is again the same thing so I already have calculated X of C let's calculate it let's, let's calculate Z at um, at this frequency and let's see what what we get here so your Z is equal to the square root of X of C squared plus R squared okay so so your 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 imp your impedance is equal to x of c squared which is basically 500 530.5 squared plus a thousand squared plus a thousand squared because that this resistor over here is actually one kilo okay so this is equal to this is equal to the square root of 530.5 squared plus a thousand squared which is equal to 1132 ohm 1132 ohm I think we are going to get the no I don't think so it's going to be a little bit different so my z over here my z over here is going to be 11 or probably i don't know let's see 1132 off so now my v of out is going to be equal to x of c to z times v of in which is equal to uh which is equal to 530.5 divided by 11 32 times and the voltage coming in the DC circuit was 10 volts peak to peak and this is actually different from this from this 10 volts that I wrote here this is a 10 volts DC offset this is a DC, 10 volts peak to peak AC voltage so these are actually two different things so so that's the same thing as um, 500 5000 
5305 divided by 1132 and you will get 4.6 volts 4.7 volts and the voltage that I got there was 3.4 volts not the same thing really not really the same thing so 5305 divided by 1132 4.7 4.7 volts keeps the peak uh, not the same thing because at 30 kilohertz my output was actually was actually 3.4 3.4 volts peak to peak but well well it's 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 I don't know it's close enough we can we can just let it be as it is but 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 again I was I was kind of suspecting that the circuit was behaving a little bit different a, a little bit weird maybe it was um, I'm sure it was nothing about the test equipment that we used because I was uh, I was doing everything pretty meticulously and and I was paying attention to everything and I mean sometimes the test my test equipment starts acting up but uh, um, or sometimes behaving not properly but um, I don't think that was the problem but we can just let it be for now that's that's not a problem okay now now you can see that um, now if you if, if in this circuit if in this circuit you compare the compare the AC and DC input output voltages you saw that basically the when it when when we were talking about the DC part the input was the input was 10 volts and the output was 5 volts and when about the, the AC part the input was 10 volts peak to peak the output was actually what we calculated here was 4.7 volts peak to peak uh, 4.7 volts peak to peak but this is the, 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 the value that we calculated in in reality it was 3.4 volts peak to peak so I'm, I'm just going to take this value over here 3.4 volts peak to peak so your input to output your input to output in the case of DC was 10 to 5 which is equal to 2 the ratio is 2 over here your input to output is 10 to 3.4 10 to 3.4 which is equal to uh, which is equal to something like 2.9 okay so that's basically how how this thing behaves meaning that for meaning that the same filter is doing a completely different thing for for it for for a DC input compared to a compared to an to an AC input meaning that if you input AC and DC then the, the results are going to be completely different for the exact same filter okay and that's basically that now what I'm going to do in the next video I'm going to um, solve a couple of such I mean it's a, a couple of problems like these I mean like the one that we that we already that we just did and then we will get to the rest of the topics that we have so I'll see you in the next video thank you